Okay, welcome back. We are talking about the strengths and weaknesses of Boole. What are its powers and what are its limitations? And what we're gonna look at here is the concept of logical truth or necessary truth. Boole can prove that some sentences are logical truths or necessary truths. It can also prove that some are not. But what Boole cannot do is take any sentence which is a logical truth and prove that it is. Because again, not all of logic is captured by Boole. Boole just captures truth functional logic and not all logic is truth functional. Okay, let's look at some more concepts. The concept of a tautology is gonna be really important to this course. So um, you, gotta, you gotta learn what it is now. There's a couple of definitions of the concept of a tautology, but that's because there's multiple ways of explaining the same thing. They're not different definitions of different concepts. A tautology is just a type of logical truth. It's a logical truth which is truth functionally true. That is to say, its truth table is all T's. If you do a truth function of it, it will never have an F in its truth uh, in its column. Uh, another way of putting the same concept is, well, tautologies are the logical truths which are guaranteed to be true because of truth functional logic. Not all logic is truth functional, and that and that's why not all logical truths are tautologies, but a lot of them are. The concept of a tote falsity is just the opposite of a tautology. Instead of all truths, a tautological falsity is all Fs. So tote falsities are logical falsehoods, they're logical falsities, which are guaranteed to be false because of truth functional logic again. Now, besides, these are the types of necessary truth, remember, necessarily true or necessarily false. Uh, the contingent sentences are the ones that are possibly true and possibly false. And we can capture that same concept with a truth table too. It just means its truth function is not all T's or all F's, but it's a mixture of the two. It has at least some T's and some F's. Remember, all of atomic sentences from the point of view of truth tables are contingent because when you put them in the reference columns, they're gonna have some T's and some F's. Now, let's look at some examples because abstractly speaking, it's hard to grasp. Take the sentence P or not P. This is a tautology because if you do the truth function for it, it's all T's. Uh, this is called the law of excluded middle. So we've, we've been talking about this kind of sentence before. Or think about something like P and not P. Here's just a straightforward contradiction. This is all Fs. If you do the truth function for this thing, it's going to be all Fs. So here we have a tautology, and here we have a tote falsity. Now, not only are these, uh, the important thing to grasp about these, though, is that it's the truth functional connectives that are revealing their logical features. It's just the meanings of and and negation that guarantee this is all Fs. Or it's just the meanings of disjunction and negation that guarantee this is all Ts. So the, so the, Logical properties that guarantee that these sentences are necessary, either necessarily true or necessarily false, are just the true functional ones. All right, let's see if you can um, do some, some examples of your own now. Here's two complex sentences. I want you to practice. Tell me if this sentence is a tautology or not, or a tot uh, falsity. So do a truth table for each and tell me, is it a tot tautology, tot falsity, or contingent, and do it for each of the two sentences. So pause your videos now and compute some truth functions um, so that you actually learn something from watching these videos. Okay, that was your chance. Um, we're gonna talk about the answers. Pause your videos now if you haven't computed the truth functions. All right, I'm gonna do them on a joint truth table, but technically speaking, if we're just evaluating each sentence individually, you don't need a joint truth table because we're not trying to decide if these are equivalent or not. We're just trying to decide what is the nature of this sentence. Uh, of course, you can, you can tell whether they're equivalent or not too this way. So I'm just gonna compute the first one first. Uh, I have to compute the innermost connective. So I compute the negation of A here. I inverted A's values. And here I just computed the conjunction of A and B. And now I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, that, this double negation, of course, is going to reverse those values and reverse them back. So I just skipped computing this disjunction. Here's the truth function. So if you did your truth table correctly for sentence number one, this is what you should have gotten. Um, now let's let's do the one. Um, well, let's evaluate this sentence first of all. You tell me. Is you're supposed to say is this contingent? Is it a tautology or tote falsity? Um, the correct answer was contingent because look, it has some F and it has some T. So this is not a tautology, it's not a tote falsity, this is just a contingent sentence. Okay, let's do the second one. Now, I'm gonna first compute this innermost value here, A conjunction B, and now I negate that to get this value. This not not A is gonna have the same truth value as A. So I used this column and this column to compute this one. And look, it's all T's. So we can say, this sentence is a tautology. This is a necessary truth because of the truth functional connectives. So 
This one is not contingent because it couldn't possibly be false. This has to be true. And just the truth functional, the Boolean connectives alone guarantee that it's necessarily true. That's why this one is a tautology. So now we've seen some things that Boole can do. If sentences are necessarily true and Boole can prove that they are, then those things have to be tautologies because Boole just is the logic of truth functionality uh, and, it's, and its logical power is captured by those truth tables. Now, again, we did the same, we can do the same thing for tote falsities for necessary falsehoods um, because Boole will capture their properties too if the truth tables are making them false. The, the tricky thing, the tricky thing with equivalence, remember, was understanding how there could be some aspects of logic Boole doesn't capture. The same goes here. How is it that there could be a necessary truth but Boole doesn't capture it? Well, let's look at an example. Consider this sentence, Pia is tall or Pia is Pia. Now, this is a complex sentence in English because here there are some atomic sentences that are its parts. So if we wanted to do a, to translate this into Boole, we would have to give this an atomic sentence letter and then this thing an atomic sentence letter. I'm just gonna use T for tall and P is P. This is, there's no intuitive way to translate this. So I'm just gonna use Z, some arbitrary letter that we can keep track of. Now P is P. Remember, this is a necessary truth. Everything is the same as itself. We call this the law of identity. This can't possibly be false. But still, what guarantees that it's true is some fact about the identity relation, that everything is itself. That's not part of Boole. Boole doesn't realize that. So from Boole's point of view, this would just get an atomic sentence letter Z because all atomic sentences just get sentence letters like A, B, or P, Q, or Z. So if we translate this into Boole, it would be something like this, T or Z. And if we did a truth table for that, these are the atomic sentences. So they would each get a reference column over here. And here's the truth function. It's just the truth function for, for disjunction. So as far as Boole knows, this sentence is contingent. It's possibly true and it's possibly false. But you might be scratching your head. How can that be? Because I know this sentence is necessarily true. And if P is P is always true, then if that's in a disjunction, the complex sentence is always true too. Because the complex sentence or is true whenever one of the disjuncts is true. So this sentence is a logical truth, but Boole can't see that it's a logical truth. Why? Because remember, Boole only sees truth functional logic. And what's guaranteeing that this is true is not a truth functional fact. It's a fact about the identity predicate. And Boole just doesn't realize that. It's not a part of Boole. So here's the technique you can use. This is what I call uh, the extended truth table technique or crossing out rows technique. What you do is you know this sentence couldn't possibly be false, Z. So you can look over here in Z's reference columns and you can cross out the rows where Z is false because you know that the Z has to be true. The truth table doesn't know it. So technically speaking, these rows really are here in the truth table. But if you wanna use the, this reasoning to go further, you can use the information you have about this atomic sentence to decide these rows are impossible and then look, what, what rows are left over over here? Just the true ones. So that allows you to know this sentence actually is a logical truth, but it's not a tautology. Because when you're considering whether it's a tautology, you have to take into consideration all of the rows of the real truth table. But once you start crossing out rows, you can make some inferences. You can figure out more than the truth table realizes. You can tell this is necessarily true because there's only T's that are left. But that doesn't make it a tautology. That just makes it a logical truth. Okay, so what we've been talking about in this video is what are the limitations of Boole? It can tell that some sentences are necessarily true, but for any logical truth, it doesn't necessarily have the ability to tell you that it's a logical truth. Sometimes pictures are super helpful, so I'm gonna give you a visual image to, to, to store all of this information. Logical truths, these are all the sentences that are necessarily true because of logic. And there's a subset of those that are the tautologies. So this inner circle is part of the logical truths. And these are the ones that are truth functionally true, but not all of logic is truth functional logic. So the stuff out here encodes all the rest of logic, like the logic of the identity relation. So P is P of this sentence, Z would go out here as a logical truth, but not a tautology. Whereas the excluded middle, this would be a tautology in here. Some sentences aren't necessarily true at all. These are just the contingent truths. Like let's say P is tall. This sentence T is just a contingent truth. Or there are also sentences that aren't even true. Here's a contingent falsehood, like P is short. Or if you negate a contingent truth, you get a contingent falsehood. 
Um, and besides the identity predicate, just to get you the sense that there's a whole lot of logic out here, I used the less than relation. There's a logic of less than. No object can be less than itself. So if I say it's not true that A is less than A, um, then that has to be, then that has to be true. Actually, you know, I'm going to correct my slide here. There should be a negation in front of this Y because really this whole sentence is not an atomic sentence here. That Y should be um, not, uh, excuse me, Y should be A does not, is not less than A. And, uh, and this whole sentence is the negation of Y. That's the thing that's a logical truth. Oh, it's not letting me correct my slide. Um, so, so put a, put a not Y in here. I'll correct the slides before I post it to Canvas. Um, so these, so not A less than A, that's a logical truth because A less than A, that's necessarily false. That can't possibly be true. But again, what's making this a logical truth, not A less than A, is not a fact about truth functional logic. It's not negation alone that's doing the work. It's the fact that nothing can be less than itself, that that's impossible. Uh, and so that's why this sentence is not just a tautology. If you do a truth table for this, it's possibly true and possibly F possibly true and possibly false. Um, so it's, it's, it's not uh, just guaranteed to be true because of the truth functional connectives. Okay, thanks.